See what I can do. Was there anything else, ma'am? Yes. A very large scotch, please. <laughs> people in the foaming wrecks. Still, you might be lucky. Sometimes it takes ages. <laughs> That's better. Bubble gum. Worked wonders for unpopping the ears. You what? Sorry. What were you saying? I couldn't hear you. The luggage. Sometimes it pops out in a jiffy. Other times you might as well pitch a tent. I never mind lingering for a while when I arrive at London Airport. Ah, oh, what an atmosphere. Mm, it's got a smell like nowhere else on earth. Yardley's lavender, English tobacco, damp tweeds. Mm, nostalgic smells we expatriates dream about. All I can smell is B.O. and Domestos. <laughs> so evocative of Heathrow. <laughs> oh, but tell me. I haven't been back for ten years. That charming drive west along the motorway, is it still the same? Oh, yes, lady. Still the same. Still down to one bleeding lane. <laughs> <laughs> You've no idea how I've been looking forward to coming home. I've been invited to stay with my son and his wife. Granny, are you? <laughs> Afraid not. I just look like one. <laughs> After all that time in California, I'm beginning to resemble a drive through. My son's an hell's angel. He's always wanted to be one. Ever since he bit the head off of his sister's My Little Pony. <laughs> what does your wife make of that? What wife? She left me years ago for a life of bliss in Ipswich with her macrame teacher. Snap! You're a divorcee too. This son of yours. Meeting you, is he? No, I told him I'd make my own way. That reminds me. I must go and make a phone call, let them know I've landed. Hang on a minute, lady. It's all happening. Oh, look, that! 
one of mine. Oh. <laughs> well done, well Mrs. I've seen worse performances than that from a man in didn't go. Oh, thank you. Oh, look, there's another one coming. All right, Miss, it's all right. You point and I'll grab. That's what I'm here for. I'll tell you what. As all my cases are identical, I think I'll make that telephone call while you collect them. You can't go wrong. They've got my initials on. I'll be as quick as I can. <laughs> Howard, you're back. Not so late tonight, either. No. Owing to circumstances beyond British Rail's control, the 547 arrived on time. <laughs> which probably qualifies it for the Guinness Book of Records. Yes, dear, probably will. Now go and sit down and make you some tea. I'll have a drink. I need one. I'm afraid your mother hasn't arrived yet. So I gather. Let's savor the last moments of calm and tranquility. I hope she managed to get a plane. Knowing my mother, if there wasn't a plane available, she'd hijack one. <laughs> you know, dear, I fully appreciate that Laura can be rather a trial at times, but it's never intentional. Well, she has so many redeeming features. Uh, Helen, I am aware of my mother's virtues. Have you suddenly been stricken with amnesia? You might recall that many of her more philanthropic gestures had the ultimate effect of a well-aimed scatterbomb. Of course, you always were dedicated towards seeking excuses for her embarrassing sorties. Not at all. I mean, there were moments when I thought... Still haven't lived down some of them. Councillor Clark, for instance, never ceases to drag up the fact that she once hurled a brick through his windscreen. Yes, yeah, I understand, but you mustn't forget Laura... I know, I know. He was quite wrong to leave his dog in the back with all the windows closed. <laughs> there are, however, less drastic means of obtaining in-car ventilation. It was a spur-of-the-moment thing. I mean, Laura was... Look, they're all spur-of-the-moment things. What you didn't seem to realise, Helen, was that aided by an animal rights conscious press, my mother started an epidemic of brick hurling. <laughs> Even motorists with stuffed tigers in the back parked at their peril. <laughs> God, the humiliation of it all. And now it's going to start all over again. Helen, get me one of my pills, will you? No, damn it, I mustn't take them with alcohol. Oh, dear, do try and calm down. Let's change the subject. How can we change the subject? Any moment now, my mother's coming to stay with us for Lord knows how long. Maybe to the end of her days. To the end of her days. <laughs> oh, really, Howard, this is absurd. Well, I know you could hardly be accused of having an Oedipus complex, but there is such a thing as filial duty mm. and gratitude. Your parents practically bought this house for us. Anyway. You'll probably find your father running off with that young girl and the shock of the divorce will have calmed her down considerably. Do you really think so? <laughs> of course I do. C'è una persona che mi interessa. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ten and fifty p coins only. Tell me, used to be a few pence. I'm keeping an eye on her now. I have to make the switch. Something about some guy on the plane. Could be surveillance. Anyway, I'll make the switch back once she's taken in through customs. Best not to take any chances, eh? <laughs> Hello. She's buzzing around the phone booth. Hello. Hello. Apple, are you there? Yes, Mr. Gossett. <laughs> Still here. She's gone back to the carousel now. Look, in case of slippers, you better know what she looks like. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> She's redhead, hazel eyes, fair complexion, 50-ish, turned up nose, medium height. She's wearing a blue blouse and trousers, grey shoes, yellow loose coat, and gypsy earrings. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? What more do you want? A blood group? I'll meet you as arranged. Burke. <laughs> ah, wonderful. You found them all. I really think you've earned yourself a medal. I think I've heard myself a hernia. <laughs> what is it with you, lady? Are you moving house? Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Look, I'm going to need a hand with this lot. Hey, 
right. I need some reinforcement. I've got a right one here. She's off her trolley. Give a hand. How kind. Yep. I never did get that phone call, you know. Or an ice cream, either. Have you anything to declare, madam? No, nothing. Except that I'm a great believer in multilateral free trading. No frontiers, the world one big common market. Anyway, it would take ages to go through this lot. It would be more than the customs officers' lives are worth to keep two busy porters like you waiting that time. Don't you believe it, lady? <laughs> Follow me! <laughs> Whew, that was a near thing. That one's bursting at the seams with booze and stuff. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Who, me? Yes, sir, you. The gentleman in the brown suit. <laughs> oh, yes, please. <laughs> now, sir, you're passing through the green, so I take it you're carrying nothing but the statutory concessions? No, uh, just the usual knick-knacks. Well, in that case, sir, would you mind opening your bag? Yes, sir, of course, yeah. Knickknacks, did you say, sir? So? Uh, my wife's. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> dear, dear. Will you take a check? That'll do nicely, sir. And can we please hurry it up, eh? Get this heap out of here. Taxis and authorised vehicles only. Won't be a minute, Gov. Someone's expecting me to pick them up. Arrange to meet them here. Oh, give me that stuff. <laughs> you ain't meeting nobody, mate. You're touting. You think I don't know the record? Touting? What? Me? Yeah, you. And several others like you. Hang around the taxi rank. A quick word, and then you're off with half a dozen Emmys in the back. You are, Fenton. I was expecting you in the Daimler. <laughs> of course, the brown is a much better idea with all these cases. How clever of you. <laughs> I'm so sorry if my driver's been holding up the traffic. Do forgive him. Now, come along, Fenton. Give these gentlemen a hand with the luggage. Very good, madam. I hope you enjoyed this trip. Refreshing to be back again amongst friendly and helpful souls. And of course, British traffic wardens. We love their good manners and forbearance. I don't know about that, kind of oh, So unlike the American wardens. Oh, they call them gorillas there, you know. <clears throat> Great hairy creatures with little red eyes. And the men are even more alarming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen. What would I have done without you? Thanks a lot, Mrs. <laughs> And don't go! <laughs> yeah, we are. Oh, uh, no, madam. Really? Well, we're, not, we're not allowed to accept gratuities. Nonsense, that's not a gratuity. It's a necessity. <laughs> it's frozen out here all day. A little bit now and again. We'll keep you alert and on the job. Well, let you put it that way. <laughs> Light! Home, Fenton! Oh, 
good. That's that Naseman Airport behind us. Now tell me, is this journey going to take you terribly out of your way? No, not terribly, madam. If you've got the bread. No, it's too far. What about a safari? The foothills of Everest. Croydon? <laughs> not at this precise moment, thank you. And let's drop the madam, shall we? It served its purpose. My name is Laura. What's yours? Ron. Ron. Oh. Don't shorten a very nice name. I shall call you Ronald. Whatever lights your candle. But it ain't Ronald. Really? What is it then? It, it, Go on! It's Oberon. Oh, but that's a marvellous name. Oberon. He was the king of the fairies. <laughs> I'm so wrong. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You're being oversensitive. If Oberon's good enough for Shakespeare, it's good enough for anyone. Oh, slow down, please. There it is. My favourite view. Windsor Castle. One of the most splendiferous royal homes, don't you think? Where do you live? A squat in Slough. That's probably much more fun. Yeah, we got it together there. We? Me and my girlfriend. She's into art, a student. She's painting flowers all over the walls. Oh, how wonderful. I must come and see them. After all, we're going to be close neighbours. Sure. But I don't know about close. You're right in a scampi and a basket belt. Nonsense, Oberon. Don't be such a snob. Whereabouts in Slough do you live? Victoria Road. Which house? It used to be called the Larches, but the squatters before us renamed it. What's it called now? The Scrubbery. <laughs> <laughs> the Larches. Do you know, when I was a girl, we used to live three doors down from there. Really? As a matter of fact, I went to the convent school round the corner. Not for long, though. I was expelled. Oh, hey, Laura, you have me on. I got slung out of school, too. Really? What for? I set fire to the bike sheds. I set fire to a nun. <laughs> <laughs> I never was much good at chemistry. So is your old man's car broken down, then? No. I left my husband in Los Angeles. Oh. The problem was, I was happily married, but he wasn't. So he set up house with a delectable 18-year-old is now the new Mrs. Kingsley. Oh, come on. I bet he still loves you. Oberon, if my ex had genuinely loved me, he would have married someone else in the first place. Oh, Dick! You mean you let this bimbo get away with nicking your old man? Yeah. But not to worry. I got my revenge. I let her keep him. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't overtake. If I'm not mistaken, that's an unmarked police car in front. So what? So, Oberon, you haven't got a current road license. True. And if you overtake, it's just possible he might spot that beer mat you've stuck in its place. <laughs> <laughs> oh! The Red Lion! What a lovely pub! You have chosen well. Damn it! What a balls up! They've taken the bag in with them, otherwise it would have been a double. Yes, Mr. Lossie. Now what? want me to do it the hard way. What <laughs> <laughs> that tail we were worried about? Well, there wouldn't be if he's a pro, would there? Anyway, that and the risk of her and the Schwarzer kid being able to pick me out of a lineup rules out the uh, direct approach. So? So? I go in there and play it by ear. We'll reserve your particular talents as a last resort. OK, if you say so. Do you know, Oberon, for the last ten years, I've been promising myself that when I came back, my first stop would be at a good old English country pub. And here I am. Ta-da! <laughs> OK? Oh, yes, it's very nice. The sort of cross between Caesar's Palace and the Rover's Return. Yeah, yeah it's right, isn't it? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, hot dogs. <laughs> never happened to the good old ploughman's lunch. Ploughman's lunch? Oh, never mind. Here, Oberon, you order what you like for yourself and the barmaid, and I'll have a scotch on the rocks. A pound? No. <laughs> How long did you say you'd been away? Anyway, this wouldn't even pay for the rocks. 
How stupid of me. Here, what will this get us? Mugged. Mugged? <laughs> Not if I can help it. <laughs> Okay, look, have this one on me. Oh, no, don't be silly. No, please. It's a welcome home drink. Oh, Brad, that's very gallant of you. Now, if you lend me ten pence to make my phone call, you're my friend forever. Where's the phone? It's uh, through there. Thank you. Large scotch on the rocks and a Coke, please, love. And that one for yourself. Oh, thanks very much, Batman. I'll have an orange. Hey. Who's the fossil? Have you gone into the antique business? Quiet, I'm going for old masters, not old mistresses. <laughs> right, and a coat. That's one set of five, right? Yes, sir. Half a lager, please. Yeah, um, I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, <laughs> snap! <laughs> No luck with the phone again, I'm afraid. Somebody using it. No, somebody's pinched it. It's the way, it's the way it goes. Yes, I know. Vandals everywhere. In California, though, it's sometimes harder to get off the phone than on it. Yeah? Super glue. <laughs> Here. Thanks, Oberon. Cheers. Cheers. It's always best back in your own country, isn't it? Yeah, but in that case, why aren't you back in yours? Because there ain't no work in Lewisham. <laughs> Sorry about the staff here. Can't bring anyone respectable to this dive. Oh, really? Well, wait till I tell that to your girlfriend, or she dumps you by now. Careful what you say, white woman, or I'll put you in my cooking pot. <laughs> right. <laughs> You've asked for this. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Yeah, yeah. Hey, come here. Come here. What's that down there? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Didn't I see you on the plane? Sorry. I thought I saw you on the plane from Los Angeles. No, you must be mistaken. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I thought I recognised you. I probably look like somebody else. Oh, yes, that's probably it. Mm. <laughs> Typical of me, though. I'm always rushing at people, thinking I know them, and ending up with egg all over my face. Do you know, I remember once bumping into my stockbroker and saying, well, it seems as though the bottom's dropped out of everything. He looked stunned. No wonder. Because it wasn't my stockbroker. It was my gynaecologist. <laughs> I suppose it's new age, really. It comes to us all in time. But, of course, there are occasions when I'm so confident that I know the person. Oh, look, look at the time. I'm so, I've really got to get off. Oh, of course. Goodbye, then. Bye. Bye. Oh. Come on, Oberon. we better hit the road. My son will be sending out a search party. OK, let's split. Oh, good. At least they've kept a good old traditional dartboard. See if you can score a bullseye. Certainly. souvenir of your return to British Publain. <laughs> oh, what a kind thought. Incidentally, I've got something for you. It's a new beer mat for when that one runs out. <laughs> Admiral Jellicoe, what's this? I don't wear Y fronts. <laughs> I've got the wrong bag. That man in the pub, he's taken mine by mistake. There he is in that car. Oberon, try and catch up with him. Hang on to your seatbelt, missus. <laughs> you got it, man. Don't be sus in it, No. Got a bit dodgy, though. That loony bird noticed our bags were the same and started chatting me up. <laughs> well, it's a turn up for the books. Oh, loony bird in the van is behind us. <laughs> you must have made quite an impression, Mr. Gossett. Well, loser, fast. Yes, Mr. Gossett. 
Jeez, they're really moving now. My wheels can't match that. Sorry, missus. Oh, dear. Oh, well. You did your best, didn't you, baby? Hmm? Never mind, Oberon. You might have handed in. You look like an honest man. <laughs> there are still a few of us left. I'll turn around to get you home. Quick work, Mr. Gossip. Got pay for the trophy room, eh? Shut up! What's the problem? That damn woman has still got my airline bag. Tell you what, Mr. Gossip. Wouldn't just see if she's got something to eat in there, could you? All right. Turn back and see if we can spot them. Oh, no, there we have got a problem. <laughs> the next exit isn't for miles. On the accelerator. I know how you feel, Mr. Gossip. After all this chasing around, it's not have time to give yourself a bit of a tuck shop. <laughs> Last a bit of luck. Look, her address. Great. Mate, right, write her a love letter. Just drive, Mr. Hemlock. Yes, Mr. Gossip. Now I bon. must and gone forever, bon. dreadful, bon. sorry, Clementine. Bon. There's a hole in my bucket. There lies her, there lies her. There's a hole in my bucket. There lies her, a hole. Fancy you knowing that. <laughs> my grandma used to stick it to me. Oh, I see. So, what'd you think of the van? Terrific. It must have taken pounds off my bum. <laughs> well, here we are, Obron. That's my son's house, the one with the carriage lamps out front. Looks as if one's been nicked. Oh, good. They were ghastly. I must find someone to nick the other. <laughs> Helen, I think my mother's arrived. I heard a car door slam. I'll have a look. This is it. <laughs> no, it's not her. Just some rowdies in a van. <laughs> be careful with that one. It's got the duty free in it. Obron, we're going to need some help with these. Go and ring the doorbell and ask them to give us a hand. Okay. <laughs> Hasn't got a dog, has he? Some roadworks ahead, Mr. Gossett. <laughs> Just shut up and weave, Happy. Weave. <laughs> peace, perfect peace. More Laura and Disorder next Sunday at the same time, 7 15.